We're ready to go as they pack up here on the streets of Long Beach for the Acura Grand Prix. Green flag, green, green. let's go for the final time this year. Pretty good lineup so far. Grosjean now looking down the inside. Felix Rosenquist tucked right up behind Castro Neves. Bell, and it looks like it's going to be pretty clean in the first corner. The Firestone Fast Lakes was all by clear themselves ball. on the front straightaway. They slot in single file. Look at Castro Neves. Locks up there. Pagano in that bright yellow car looking to attack. Pato came sailing down the inside of James Hinchcliffe to grab a position. He's the only guy that moved up a spot on the, on the initial start. He I'm knows the urgency. Pato Award. He has to make up positions and he's got to do it fast. Oh, he's looking at Grosjean as well. It takes a peek there on the red tires. Will he take a dive down the inside here? A Rosenquist does oh. on Pagano. Turn eight, great move. Pagano on the harder black tire. Rosenquist on the softer red. Nice that job, means nice job. More grip on the start. Here comes Grosjean up the inside of his fellow Frenchman. And that's a nice move at turn nine. Now Awards lining up. Look at the orange and black arrow McLaren SP Chevy. Tough to do it there. As they go to the hairpin, he has to tuck back in behind the Menard Chevy. Oh, look at that. Ed Jones sailing. Oh. Makes contact with Pato. This is big for the championship. Ed Jones turns Got hit. around. Yes, hold on, Ed Jones. That was a big lunge by Ed Jones. Really tough to do when the cars are all packed up on each other. He's definitely going to get a penalty for that, but now Pato Awards Championship. He's really got to change it up with the strategy. Pato we'll, uh, goes, we'll work some magic here and try to goes to dead last. I was going to say without a yellow, but I think we're going to get a yellow. Huge break for Award. That's Sebastian Bourdais in the Rocket Chevrolet, and now Award at least can pack up to the back of the grid here. That's Taylor Kyle, the team president at Arrow McLaren SP, the man you hear in the ears of Pato Award. Watch for the yellow, black, and red car. That's Ed Jones. He goes on Hinchcliffe, but the victim's going to be Award. Yeah, really high, per, you know, low percentage move, really, on the first lap downs, and it's just really not needed. But look at Palo here, right behind. He's the th next car in line. The he sees car. the accident happen. He gets contact from two different cars. So we have to watch that front wing that could be damaged on Pelot's car as well. On board with O'Ward. Listen. Pick is active on the front. I got hit. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, jump. Watch this. Herta gets some air. Whoa, he's l lucky that he doesn't break the, the suspension on that. The he got up pretty high in the air, no, 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 no. There you see Zach Brown and Taylor Kyle from the McLaren team. They can't believe their luck on the opening lap. Now the Whoa. green flies. Here we go. I'll tell you what, Scott Dixon's got a good shot here in the draft. That was a pretty slow restart by Newgarden. Here he comes, taking a look down the inside. Too far back. Elio Castro Neves defends from Felix Rosenquist. And then Romain Grosjean in that purple Nurtec Honda for Dale Coyne with Rick Ware racing. The Frenchman, he wants his first IndyCar victory here today. Those top five drivers all on the softer red tire. So apples to apples comparison here on performance. Simon Pagino in that bright yellow car, the first car on the harder black tire, should have good tire temp versus the start now, but they're single file coming to turn six. Race control has made the decision. Ed Jones gets a drive through penalty, avoidable contact. That was, I guess you could say was obvious. Check this out. You've got Alex Palou now. Award is already at the back. Palou got a break there, some breathing room, but now he's got Colton Herta, potentially the fastest car on the track and the most frustrated driver on the track right behind him. Frustrated Paul because he did not match his qualifying performance like we expected. Yeah, he Ed crashed in qualifying. Ed Jones right there behind these two guys, so he's going to have to peel off. But right now, here comes Colton Herta. He's right there in the draft. Will he be on the push to pass? That was Jones. Trying to make a move, and here we go. Here it comes. Jones was serving his penalty. Herta on the championship leader side by side. No contest. That gives him the inside for turn one. Rosenquist almost comes together with Castro Neves. Pato Award is oh, a move. Rosenquist. Go. That was close. They almost really touched, close. But look at Grosjean now. Squares it up. He's going to try an outside move. Tough to make that work, but he's going to probably cross over. Oh. He does. Grosjean looking up the inside of Rosenquist. He's going to fire it down in there. Turn send nine. it in. and Oh, big lockup hits the wall, Rosenquist. Look to the orange, blue, and black car. Lockup. How badly does he hit the wall, or does he indeed hit the wall? I think it just got a little squirrely. 
It is the Gainbridge Honda pilot Colton Herder, the winner last week at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca on Simon Pagenaud of Team Penske. Oh. Simon squeezed him there a little and Herder hung tough. This is what it looked like for the 21-year-old. That was wild stuff, T-Bell, but he's been the fastest guy all weekend. Got it all wrong in qualifying, but he is flying through the field right now. And trouble here for Pado Award, oh. championship contender. Bro. Kevin, it's over. Gearbox issues, slowing to a stop. One from the championship, eliminated, it appears. I can see that the half shaft, Kevin, is broken right here where he got hit. Look at that. Where he got hit right there, that uh, drive shaft, Townsend, is broken. So that's the corner that he got hit on, and that has eliminated them from the race. The caution now comes out. I believe Alex Below got on pit road. He did before the caution came out, and they closed pit road. So IndyCar doing a very good job there. Below hitting pit road, saying the tires, because he started on those scuffed red tires, really gave up at the end of that run. They're putting on one of those sets that they scuffed in and warm up this morning at the black primary tires for Alex Below, who now the game is totally changed. Conservative day, all they need to do is finish 12th, and the title is his. Oh. So, Castro Neves, Grosjean, Rosenquist, and a string of others chose not to dive for the pits. It's the reigning Indy 500, the four-time Indy 500 champ, leading the way, Elio Castro Neves, who was just so upset earlier today in warm-up after a collision with Alexander Rossi. Back to racing, he's chased by the sole remaining Aero McLaren SP Chevy of Felix Rosenquist. Then that's Takuma Sato, Scott McLaughlin, Ryan Hunter Ray and Will Power. Little surprise, Paul. None of these guys electing to pit Whoa. under caution. They stay out. They're only going to make it about another oh, 10 laps or so before they'll have to pit under green. Oh, oh no. someone's in the wall. That's Ericsson, Marcus Ericsson in the Husky Chocolate Honda for Chip Ganassi Racing. And another caution flies. Alexander Rossi and Marcus Ericsson fighting over the same piece of real estate. No contact. Ericsson just gets wide. Yeah, no, and Rossi uh, very smart to try to back out of what appeared to be a, a sure lose situation on board with Rossi. Yeah, they just ran in there really hard. Marcus didn't really lock it up, but just could make the corner, ran out of real estate. That's just hard racing. Let's go back racing with Elio Castro Neves at the head of the field playing with a really risky strategy. Yep, still can't quite figure it out, but nonetheless, Castro Neves leads at Long Beach on the restart. He's going to have to pit in probably four or five laps. You lose about 40 seconds. And look at this, Dixon and Colton Herta side by side with contact there into turn one. Dixon with the advantage. That's really the fight for second, Paul. Yeah, the guy on the move right now is Colton Herta. He was the first to hit the pit lane on that yellow, and he has had the fastest car all race long and all weekend. So he's looking at trying to overtake Dixon right here, and he's got to run right now. This is the run up to turn six. It's a dicey move, but he's coming from a long way back. Colton Herter on the six-time champ, just like that. It's Colton Hurd on the yeah. back straight. Perfect Text pass. Si set it up perfectly. Used the push to pass. Townsend, he's used a lot of it, but he has come from 14th to be the effective leader of the Long Beach Grand Prix, his hometown race. Newgarden's got to try to hang on, though, with the points as they run right now. Newgarden really needs to win this race. Just a few laps ago, Grosjean forcing it up the inside. That's pretty tight, shoulder to shoulder. Rossi hangs tough and they bang wheels. Little hip check, not sure who won. I'm gonna assume Grosjean beat out Rossi here to the fountain. It's yeah, exactly where Rossi and Castroneves got together this morning, except Castroneves came out the worst for it. Hitchcliffe under attack now from, from Sebastian Bourdais, yeah. Will Power. I don't know what's going on with Hinch. Hinch is dropping, dropping back. Like Power's going to send it up the inside. Watch this. Turn eight inside. They've removed that curbing there, so it widens the track. Job done. Hinch is trying to respond. Power oh. puts his car in the middle of the road, making it very wide, that Verizon Chevy. Hinchcliffe's not done with yet, or is he? Oh. Turn nine, couldn't get it done. Power way deep on the brakes, gets sideways, and then big oversteer on the power, exiting. Romain Grosjean's chances of winning his first IndyCar race in his maiden season are over. This is what happened. Well, not a heavy contact there. B barely brushed the wall. We've seen Bell, a lot. But, I mean, it didn't doesn't take much to bend that toe link. We've seen a lot worse this weekend. So the Dale Coin Rick Ware Racing guys go to work to try and at least get the 51 back out on track so he can finish this season. There's Connor Daly in the US Air Force Chevy. He's run long and come to a stop.
And to finish that point, I said to Ricky, when was the last time you had a championship with Ganassi? He said it was 2013 with Dixon. Oh. Oh, Askew got into the wall. Action all over the place. And this Full could course change, up, change up some strategy here. A lot of marbles. So look at all that marbles on the outside. This is going to be trouble for Colton Herta in the form of Joseph Newgarden. Gets to eat up all that gap now behind the pace car, and Newgarden will be restarting on Reds. Let's find out what happened oh, with that. Oh, a little, little argy bargy going on here. Turn That's on. Connor Daly. Daly has to take the overshoot, and Askew has to take the tires. Ugh. Arguing over who's going to get turn nine, and it didn't work out for either of them, but at least Connor Daly's US Air Force Chevy is not damaged, unlike the high V Honda. Colton Herter is trying to escape already before the hairpin. He's trying to get the jump on Newgarden. Newgarden's got to go with him to get green, the drive, green, green. get a good launch out of the hairpin. Herter's gone. Well, he didn't get a good launch for Newgarden because Dixon is right there in the draft. And Dixon was really putting the pressure on Newgarden. But right now, it's all Colton Herta. But those black tires, T-Bell, they're not as fast as the Reds. Brilliant stuff, though, through the hairpin for Colton Herta to put that much of a gap on a two-time IndyCar champion and a six-time IndyCar champion. That's two to go. Good job. Colton Herta, 71 seconds of push to pass. Newgarden, 45. They're both on the button all the way down shoreline here. Yeah, Herter used a big chunk there. He's down to 57 now. Less than four miles to run for Colton Herter to round out this season with back-to-back -back gap wins. close there. So this is where he's got to make it happen is in this, this tight section where he's got the downforce on the car. I think his best chance is after this next left-hander. Charging it up the inside, Marty. Team was talking to Colton. He said, everybody just be quiet, please. He thinks he needs to finish this off by himself. No interruption. And Pillow, Alex Pillow is not close enough to his teammate Scott Dixon to threaten for that podium, but that's fine. In a lap and a quarter, Alex Pillow will be crowned the champion. We'll deal with that when it's on the final lap. Meanwhile, this scrap for the lead is intensifying. But Herder just seems to be able to hold Joseph to a level that's comfortable. Uh, he's got to make it happen in the fountain section in turns one, two, three, four, and five right there. Look at this car just pull away. Here, one to go. Good. But then in the break zone, T Bell, he's just going to close right up. Yeah, if he can get close through the Look fountain and back on out of turn six, then I think he'll have a shot. But Colton has just done a masterful job to hang on to the back end of his race car and just manage that wheel spin we heard earlier. Worldwide this year, your comments, your enthusiasm, your passion about the NTT IndyCar season have been noticed. This series is alive and the competition is fantastic. And we have noticed, the series notices, we're glad that you love it. Wherever you're watching from around the world, these guys are incredible. No matter whether it's a street circuit, a road course, a super speedway, or a small oval, it's fantastic. And there's more to come in 2022, where you can fully expect the driver of the Gainbridge Honda, Colton Herter, to be vying for a championship. This will be his sixth career win, and he gets to do it in Southern California, where he grew up. Out of the hairpin for the final time, Colton Herter will have the last say of 2021. Herter wins again for the first time at Long Beach. And Alex Pelot is an NTT IndyCar champion. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're an amazing team. Thank you so much. Did everything he needed to do. Awesome job, everybody in the 10 car. What a great, great season. It's been such a pleasure going to the racetrack with everybody. Awesome. Alex. Oh my God, guys, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you for this season. There has never been in the history of IndyCar competition a Spanish champion. Alex Palou is his name, and he is the first.